there folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different as we are going to be spinning the wheel of sausage to see what's on the menu. Let's give it a roll. I'm a little nervous about this one, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. That's going to be a first stomach sausage. It is. And I'm familiar with two types. One is Scottish. It's called haggis and the other is Cajun. It's called Chaudan. Now, I'm a little more intimately familiar with Cajun cuisine, so I think for this episode, we are going to be making the Chaudan or the Cajun stomach sausage. Let's get into it. All right, folks, I hope you're ready to make some Chaudan, and let me just tell you right now, if you're looking for the quick and easy version, this is not it. I'm going to take you through every single step so you can make this at home successfully. Let's start with the filling. We're going to be using 100% pork. And the pork that I'm using comes from the hind leg of the pig. This is lean pork. What we're looking for is a classic 70-30 ratio. 70% lean to 30% fat. And I'm just going to cut everything up so that it can go into my grinder nicely. If you want to mix and match the proteins, you know, use beef, venison, elk, anything you want. That's fine. We're going to place this into the freezer so it can partially freeze while we look at our stomach. Now, i got to tell you right now, this is a very difficult organ for me to get. I could not get it at the butcher's. I had to go to the slaughterhouse. And as you can see right here, this is freshly butchered and incredibly slimy. Fresh stomach has a bit of a mucous membrane directly around it. So we got to clean this up. Now, if you could get stomach from your butcher, more than likely it's already going to be cleaned and you could skip this entire process. But since I cannot, let me show you how we cleaned it. We're going to run it under some cool water and gently rub the outer skin to remove a good portion of that mucous membrane. Once we've got a little bit of that cleaned up and you can kind of see it's mucousy and fatty and it's kind of wild, we're going to turn the stomach inside out. On the inside of the stomach, notice you've got a little lining of fat. What we want to do is we want to remove that and you can easily just grab that fat with your forefinger and your thumb and just pull it right off any little last remaining pieces you could use a knife just like so and now that is completely clean so that's the inside of the stomach we've got all that fat removed and it looks pretty good and what we need to do now is give this a proper cleaning so let's turn that right side out and you'll notice that it is still fairly slimy a lot of mucus on that stomach to get rid of the mucus we need to give it a salt scrub so generously apply some fine salt on the top and bottom and everything we're doing on the outside we're also going to be doing on the inside of this stomach and once you have a generous amount of salt on it begin to scrub much like you would do laundry without a washing machine and that's what we're going to do we're basically scrubbing into those pores getting rid of that mucus that slime's going to come right off remember whatever we do on the outside we're doing on the inside as well so flip it and do the exact same thing on the inside and once you are done rinse it several times under cool water and that sliminess should be gone if it's not gone go ahead and add a little more salt give it another scrub and by that time it should be good. So once you've got it properly rinsed, place it into a pan or a bowl with some cool water. And we're gonna do one last thing to it to make sure that it is properly cleaned and prepared. We're gonna add some vinegar to that water. In addition to vinegar, we're gonna come back with some baking soda. Now be sure to check the link in the description box below for the exact measurements of all the stuff that we're doing in this recipe, but this should get fairly active, fairly quick. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna give that a little mix and let it sit in that solution for about an hour. That'll help get rid of the smell, clean it up even better. Let's look at our vegetables for the filling. We're gonna be using the classic trio of vegetables. We've got bell pepper, onion, and celery to prepare that. Give them a fine dice. Nothing special about this. Once all three of those are diced up, add a little bit of oil to a skillet and on a medium, medium high heat, saute these vegetables till they are soft. I like to add just a little kosher salt during this process, which helps the vegetables sweat. Once they are soft, you're gonna remove them from the heat and let them cool. While that's cooking, I'm gonna take my sweet potato and give that a dice as well. Now, just so you know, the sweet potato is optional. All right, so let's take a look at our meat. It has been in the chiller for about 45 minutes. It looks nice and frosty. Let's get that ground up on a six millimeter plate. There it is. Our meat has been ground perfectly. It is not greasy. It's got nice loose strands to it. Let's set that back in the freezer while we look at our spices. We're going to be using salt. I'm going to be adding just a touch of curing salt because we are going to be smoking this. And the rest of the spices in this filling are going to really bring that classic Cajun flavor. So you have paprika, 
pepper. You have a little thyme, some parsley. You've got chives. Absolutely amazing. Let's not forget about the heat. We've got cayenne pepper and red pepper flakes. And then, of course, we've got breadcrumbs and a little minced garlic. The breadcrumbs are going to help with the structural integrity, the juiciness, and of course the texture. So now that we've got that done, we've also got our sauteed trinity. We've got our raw sweet potato that's been diced. I've got a little chicken stock and a couple raw eggs. When it comes to the chicken stock, we're going to play it by ear. I just want to see how dense the batter is while we mix it. And if we need to add a little chicken stock to loosen it up, we will at that point. One other ingredient that I'm going to add, and this is 100% optional. You do not have to add this. I'm adding it because I have it, but it is on Dewey sausage, a very popular sausage in South Louisiana. We're going to mix this up alongside of all the other ingredients. And all we want to do is process this the same way we did with the sweet potatoes. So we're going to give this a nice small dice and set it to the side. And there we go. That's our on Dewey sausage. It's now time to mix everything up. So take your raw pork and if you're using a stand mixer or your hands, it really doesn't matter, but it's time to incorporate the ingredients. We're going to begin with the breadcrumbs and the spices. That's going to help get everything nice and sticky. The next ingredient that I'm adding is the chicken stock, and I'm only going to add about half of that chicken stock at first, just to kind of see what's going on. Let's go ahead and add both of the eggs. I do want both of those. This also acts as a bit of a binder. It's also going to increase the richness of our sausage. Let that incorporate because that egg is going to make it a little loose. Let's come back with a little more chicken stock to see how it acts. And you know what? What the heck? Let's just add the whole thing. So we ended up putting about 10% chicken stock, and that's actually looking really, really good. I'm loving the stickiness of it. This should stick to your hand when you hold your hand upside down, just like that. Very nice. This is very sticky. That's going to be absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and add the sautéed vegetables. So notice I'm adding that towards the end. I'm also adding the sweet potato. We're going to give that a mix. And all we're doing here is incorporating because the sausage meat, it's already done. It's super sticky. So as soon as those vegetables are well incorporated, you can go ahead and shut it down. And don't think I forgot about the andouille sausage. We're just going to mix that in by hand. Now, if you have a big enough stand mixer, Go ahead and toss that in there, mix it for another few seconds, and you are good to go. But I'm just going to make sure that we fold all of this in. This batter is incredibly sticky. That's going to hold all those ingredients nice and tight. At least that's the idea. You don't want your shaw ban to be all crumbly. That is done, folks. Let's go ahead and take a look at our stomach. And I got a question for those of you who are familiar with stomach. What do you do with this little piece right here? This nice and meaty part right there at the very bottom. To me, that looks a little suspect. I'm not sure. It could be the most delicious part of the entire stomach. I'm not going to be including it. If you want to leave it on, by all means, but we now got to do something about that gaping hole. And that's where the needle and butcher's twine come in. We're going to give that a quick sew. Our hole is now covered. Our shawdan is now ready to be filled. So just open it up kind of like a sock and begin to stuff your filling in there as tight as possible. That's the trick when it comes to making this dish, you want to make sure you pack it in there nice and tight. That's going to help with the overall bind and texture of your finished product. Now, once you have everything stuffed in there, it's time to sew it shut. I'm using a butcher's twine dispenser from the sausage maker to make this process a little bit easier. And trust me when I tell you, I am no expert at this. I'm just doing the best I can. And that's what you should do. All right, this is what your end result should look like. Your pulse, your shawdan looks absolutely beautiful. Kind of resembles a legless head crab from Half-Life 2, if you know what I'm talking about now. Now this right here is ready to go into the fridge. We're going to let the cure do its job. We're going to let all those spices come together. So refrigerate this overnight. And the next day we can begin the cooking process. I am going to put on elastic netting, which is totally optional. I do think it is going to help preserve the shape as we hang this in our smoker for a few hours. And there are lots of ways to truss a roast. Notice I'm just putting that elastic netting on this metal ring, and I'm lifting the ring, and that will securely fasten the roast inside that netting. And there we go. We're just going to tie off the bottom and the top, and it is now ready to hang. We're going to be smoking this sausage. Now, you do not have to smoke it, and if you're not going to smoke it, you can go ahead and skip past this one little step. But this is going to add a beautiful flavor, and if you have the means, I would highly suggest it. The wood of choice for this shawdan is pecan wood, but use whatever wood you like. Let's go ahead and get this smoked, and we'll get right back to you.
while that smokes, we're going to go ahead and finish up the process by rough chopping the rest of our vegetables. So we got celery, carrots, we've got mushrooms, bell peppers, and onions. You just want to try to keep everything about the same size. That's it. This is what our vegetables should look like. Let's go ahead and just set that to the side while we prepare our roux. A roux is a mixture of flour and oil that's been cooked to help thicken sauces. It's also going to add a lot of flavor. And the minute I added the flour to this little skillet, I realized I probably should have used a bigger skillet. But you know what? We'll make it work. We're going to go ahead and whisk all that till it's nice and smooth. The trick when making roux is to put your fire on a medium to medium low heat. You want to keep it moving constantly. You don't ever want to step away from the roux while you're making it because it can very easily burn. And if you burn your roux, there's no going back. It's going to leave a very bitter flavor in whatever you add it to. So constantly stir it. You could use a whisk. You could use a spoon. It's totally up to you. You just want to make sure that you mix it. And over time, it's going to begin to darken. And I'm going to show you the different stages of how a roux darkens because for this recipe, I want a dark roux. The first stage is the quickest. It's called a white roux, and that happens after about five minutes once the flour taste has been cooked out. The second stage of roux is called a blonde roux, and you got to be careful because this mixture does get hot. A blonde roux is typically used in dishes like a etouffee. Absolutely delicious. That's what that's going to look like as we continue to mix. Another 15 minutes have passed. Keep your heat on a medium to a medium low. This is a brown roux, and... The final stage, after 30 to 45 minutes of stirring, depending on how high your heat is, is going to be a dark brown roux. And we're constantly trying to push the boundaries on how dark we can get it. But this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to let that cool just a little bit and then transfer that into a mason jar. And this is great because you can now refrigerate it. And if you ever want to make something like gumbo, which is an absolutely amazing Cajun dish, the roux element for your gumbo would already be finished. Just make sure that it's cool so you don't crack the glass. And now that that's done, we're going to set that to the side because our Chaudan has finished smoking. And it's now time to transfer that into its final stage of cooking and check this out absolutely gorgeous beautiful color now looking back at this step i probably should have left that netting on and i probably should have pricked the entire stomach with the sausage pricker to allow any steam to escape or any expansion to happen because we kind of had a situation at the end and you'll see what i'm talking about here in a minute we got eight cups of chicken stock and to that i'm going to add roughly a quarter cup of my dark roux and i did have to give that roux a stir to make it come out nice and flowy and that's what it should look like as we add that to our chicken stock it's not going to incorporate super good because the chicken stock is not hot so i'm going to stick that in the blender and this is what it looks like coming out of the blender it incorporated beautifully and you can already see it start to thicken to this i'm going to add one to two tablespoons of my favorite cajun seasoning whatever you choose here is fine slap your mama's tony sashri is that all works just make sure you give it a whisk until it is well incorporated and now it's time to cook take your shawl and place it in your roasting pot fill it with vegetables and add your chicken stock till the chicken stock comes halfway up to the level of your shawl and pretty simple not a big deal once you get that chicken stock in there go ahead and give it a cover and place it in your oven. We're going to roast this at 350 degrees for two hours or until the internal temperature is 155F or 68C. Every hour, I'm going to flip the roast over so it cooks evenly. And after a couple hours, this is what our Chaudin looks like. And this smells incredible, but as you can see, this Chaudin had a slight blowout, but I don't think that's going to change the flavor. Let's remove all the solids. The pork stomach, the vegetables, everything, once you get all that removed, stick it back on the stovetop on a medium-high heat. Bring it to a boil, cook it for 5 to 10 minutes, and you're going to turn that cooking liquid into an absolute amazing gravy, which we will pour over our Chardin. Let's give it a cut and take a look at what is going on inside, and I am very pleased with what I'm looking at right here. This is piping hot. Beautiful. Beautiful texture. Sausage looks like it's holding together well, but we'll know better when we give it a cut. When I give it a press, it's got the right density, studded with all kinds of beautiful vegetables. Let's go ahead and finish cutting it up and give it a taste. <music> Hi guys, it's time to try the Cajun Stomach Sausage, Chaudan, also known as Ponce. 
And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how popular this dish is today, but when I was a kid, I would find this raw version in meat markets all throughout Louisiana. Bro Bridge, Scott, Lafayette, Welsh, Jennings, Sulphur, Lake Charles, all over the place. You would buy it from the butcher, you would take it home and then cook it the way that we did here. And it was absolutely amazing. And so let's just go ahead and see how we did. And for starters, I gotta say, I am loving the bind on this Chaudan. There are a lot of ingredients in here. We've got vegetables, andouille sausage, we've got sweet potatoes, and then that meat filling, and all of it came together so good that this is not crumbly whatsoever. Beautiful texture, nice and juicy. We did pour a little of that reduced gravy on top of it, which is typical for Chaudan. And then of course, we've got that beautiful smoked pork stomach on the backside. Let's just give it a taste. Mm. Hmm. So flavorful, incredibly delicious, and that stomach was smoked perfectly. Not too overpowering and actually quite tender. I thought it was going to be a little bit chewy, I got to be honest, but that stomach by itself, let's just give that a quick taste right here. Let me take a little piece of that stomach right by itself. Hmm. Beautiful smoky flavor, nice and tender. I do want to take a bite of the filling by itself. See that loaded with sweet potatoes and vegetables. I want to see how juicy it is going in. Hmm. Super, super juicy. I love the gravy though. Don't get me wrong. Very flavorful, but by itself, incredibly juicy, a little spicy. I got to tell you, it's coming, it's coming right about here and it's kind of working its way. I'm starting to develop that bead of sweat right on the brow. I'm loving the tenderness of the sweet potatoes. That actually adds quite a nice flavor to the dish. And then as far as the vegetables go, let's just give the carrots a try. Oh, they're not mushy. They're perfectly tender. Overall, I gotta say this Chardin, this is taking care of business. It's like a Cajun meatloaf. And the only critique that I have for this particular recipe, and it's really less the recipe and more the technique, is that I should have probably been a little more careful when cleaning the stomach, I think I made one little area a little too thin and that's what caused it to rip. And I probably should have kept the netting on it during the roasting part. You know what? Maybe next time. I hope you guys get a chance to make it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any questions about this Cajun Shawdan, leave them in the comment section below. And now for your product giveaway update. Today there will be a drawing for the Sausage Makers 50 pound meat mixer and Jinda Industries knife sharpening system called Jigs. It's not too late to enter, so check the pinned comment. I'll put a link there and you can get the details on how to enter. If you would also like to win a free upgraded 3.5 convection smoker from Smoke It at Smokers, in yesterday's episode, the hard salami, we announced all the details there. I'll put a link to that episode as well. Go back and check out that video and register to win. Thanks a lot for being here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. If you are new to this channel and you enjoy sausage making, click that subscribe button and that notification bell because although we're halfway done with Celebrate Sausage, what we have lined up for the rest of the show will absolutely blow your mind. Like tomorrow's sausage, we're taking a trip down to Colombia to make a sausage that some would consider too risky and too dangerous to even attempt. You're not gonna wanna miss it. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.